hey there YouTube uh, just making a quick video here or a quick intro maybe I've been waiting for some nice days to uh, get some sunny shots of this thing but it's been sitting outside for a couple days I've got other stuff in the garage uh, we've had an extraordinary winter here in North Dakota we've got maybe a couple of inches of snow on the ground um, haven't even been able to use the snow blower really um, need to get that back in the shed and uh, we can still see grass almost everywhere I do have a puppy that seems to think that since she doesn't have snow piles to sit on this winter that she should be sitting on cars which is a bit frustrating um, and it's been so warm that she's losing her fur already and we're just about the first day of February here um, I think she's got some cold days coming yet but anyway here's the galaxy as she sits this is with about 80 pounds in the front and 40 pounds in the rear um, just about calling the airbag work complete I guess I'm kind of moving on to some other things trying to look at some windows that uh, don't go up and down quite like they should and I've been debating if we should do power windows in this car um, uh, actually the funny thing is I just bought this focus for my uh, new teenage drivers here and this has no power windows no power locks uh, no auto lamps kind of a kind of a confusing thing for them um, so we were gonna do some upgrading in this for them it's just it's kind of unhandy parking at the high school not having any locks that sort of thing so we may do it to the galaxy too I'm not real sure uh, power trunk I'm thinking Maybe leave a comment. What do you think about this sort of thing in classic cars? I like the convenience um, and power locks definitely adds some convenience, but uh, I just don't know that power windows is such a convenience thing. And it does, I just kind of like the old school. Um, I guess I like both, but I'm kind of leaning towards forgetting about power windows in this. But we'll make it go up and down here once. <clears throat> just have a look at that. There we're fully aired out and uh, we'll go back up. The rear does go up faster of course if we raise them all at once. Smaller bags in the rear, less uh, air use and uh, of course a lot less weight back there too. There we're back to 80 in the front, 40 in the rear. We can go up a little higher. That's about 90 in the front. That's about 60 in the rear. That's as far as I want to take it. Those bags are going to blow right off go any further than that. Anyway, that's the results of our airbag work. I've contemplated some uh, some accumulators in the back, just so that it will go up and down level, but I don't know that it's all that important to me. Um, we'll probably leave it just like this. We'll maybe mess with it a little bit more like next summer, I guess. So, anyway, it is Sunday. Just got back from Sunday morning, so haven't had a chance to change clothes yet but I did want to get this shot in the daylight even though I can't get sunlight <laughs>
okay guys i've got this sped up um we're just pulling the compressor apart as you recall we were able to generate about five psi uh with this compressor so i bought another one and bought components to rebuild this one um <clears throat> but when i pulled it apart i'm not finding anything here so uh i guess i just i cleaned it up and checked everything out and we're going to put it back together and just see what happens. This is a Teflon seal in there. It seems like a Teflon seal. It's part of the piston. So nothing that you can do besides replace the rod and piston assembly. Hey there YouTube, today we're going to take a look at our 480C Viair air compressor. Um, had a few problems with it and uh, here's what I found when I tore it down. So we ordered a new piston and a new cylinder for our compressor. But just for the fun of it, <clears throat> when I didn't really find what I expected in here, I just said I'm going to clean it up, put it back together, and see what we can generate uh, just by cleaning it up since the ring on there, well, we'll take a look at what you would find if you were to open this up. There's kind of a rubber ring on that piston and a reed valve in there. So, being I couldn't see anything necessarily wrong with it, we put it back together <clears throat> and I started pumping air last night with my battery here, but I was blowing most of the air out of this fitting on my line. Now, I don't know that that was broken before. I certainly hope it wasn't and that wasn't the whole issue, but we're gonna hook everything up. <clears throat> we're gonna see what kind of pressure we can generate in this spare tank I've got sitting here. And then if we're still not generating more than five PSI like it was before, then we will pull it apart and we will rebuild that. Okay, that just ran for about a minute and a half. I'm not real sure what the spec is on it, but we're up to about 115 or so. Um, I killed the compressor because I don't want it to run that much. I don't think it's supposed to uh, run at 100% duty cycle above 100 PSI. Um, I will plug it back in and just see if I can make it to 160. I believe that's what my pressure cutoff is. We're at 140 and our airline T here started popping out. So I think we're gonna stop right there. Um, those lines would never see that kind of pressure otherwise. So we will 
pulled off there. Our compressor seems to be pumping though, so I think I'll go ahead and get it installed again and we'll hold off on a rebuild of a Viair 480C compressor video. All right guys, we are nearing the completion of the compressor install. I have both of them installed now. Uh, the first one is back in. The cheaper one is also plumbed in. So we're gonna wire that in. Um, <clears throat> I do have a timer relay. I'll show you what that's about here. Uh, I just don't want both compressors hitting at the same time. Probably not a huge deal. It's only 20 amps a piece, but we have this fun little relay and uh, our timer. There might be some of you that understand it better than I do, but this thing is capable of, we can provide just a power and a ground source to it. This would be our control to turn the relay on. And then we have options to set how long it actually happens after we hit the switch. Uh, that this relay would activate but that would require another relay <clears throat> so I'm gonna just tie these two wires together so it's always switched on my tank pressure switch will turn the power on to the relay uh, just as it would a regular relay and then we'll adjust our timing so that this relay is gonna hit maybe a couple of seconds after the first one does which will turn on our second compressor relay once I get it wired in I'll show you how it looks okay quick change of plans the other timer I don't know if it was wired wrong what was going on I could not adjust the start time I could adjust the the off time by changing the start time but I could not adjust the start time so we have just a simple time delay um, our three control side and then power and ground and a teeny tiny little screw right on top of that blue box that will adjust our time. We'll get this installed and take a look at it. Okay, here are my compressor relays which are fed by the fuse panel and controlled by the pressure switch so we also have a delay built in now I'm gonna do it without the fuses in for the compressors so I can show you what's gonna happen um, it's gonna give us about a five second delay on the second compressor so if I plug in my pressure switch here you'll see the first compress or the first relay will do nothing. I'm going to turn the key off. Key is on. Ah. Tank is full. One other thing to note is that I have two compressors in here that are not evenly matched. I have a Viair 480C that I bought on eBay and rebuilt. And then I bought this cheaper compressor. Should be about the same size, but much noisier. And uh, so I have that one on the timer so that it doesn't run as much just because it is noisier. Anyway, we'll try this again. When I plug in the pressure switch, our first tank is gonna, our first compressor is gonna kick in, and then after our delay, the second compressor will kick in. So we'll do that now with the fuses in place. And you'll certainly hear the difference in the compressors. And 
there they've been shut off by the pressure switch. All right, YouTube, we're going to cut that video off there. I really appreciate everybody spending some time with me. Um, just seeing people watch and seeing the views add up, it motivates me to keep going on this project. Um, not that I am not interested in finishing it for myself, but I hope that I'm being able to provide some enjoyment for other people and uh, have a few other projects in mind while we just drive this car for a while. So um, certainly post anything, any ideas that you have, thing, other things you'd like to see me do to this car. Um, I do have a few things in mind for this thing too, but I'm just going to hold off and uh, hopefully drive it a little bit this spring and, and see what sort of kinks we need to work out. So uh, as always, if you want to subscribe, uh, should be more Galaxy stuff. I've got a 79 Crew Cab F350, um, also a 49 F6, and a few other miscellaneous projects that we'll uh, hopefully tackle here in the near future. So um, go ahead and give me a thumbs up if you like, give me a comment, and uh, as always, appreciate your time.